So one brand that has never deviated from its core mission of producing relatively affordable, rugged tool watches is Marathon. They've been supplying watches to military organizations, including the US and Canada, since World War II. And when it comes to watches that epitomize what modern Marathon is all about, the 41 millimeter government search and rescue known as the GSAR is probably going to be the best example of that. So these watches are some of easily the most talked about watches on our website as being an AD of Marathon and being probably one of the favorites amongst enthusiasts while also having a particular history to boot. So in this video, what I wanted to do is kind of go into the details of these watches because I've not actually covered them on this channel before and kind of talk about why they are so beloved by a specific kind of group within watch enthusiast circles. So in this video, we're gonna give the GSAR a closer look. First, we'll look at a brief history of the brand, then jump into an overview of the watch, and then take a closer look at some differences between some variations of the GSAR, and then finally talk about where they're seated within the industry and why they have such an avid following. Let's jump into it. Unlike many brands out there developing watches of this ilk, Marathon has a history dating back to 1904, but was not given the name Marathon until the year 1939. Since the beginning, Marathon watches were designed in Canada, though production was and is carried out in Switzerland. Their first splash on the global stage was in 1941, when the brand began producing military timepieces for the Allied forces during World War II, a process that helped in developing the foundation for what was to come. Over the decades, Marathon served primarily as a military contract company providing watches, clocks, stopwatches, and other equipment to other various military and government standards. In addition to this, they also were selling overruns from government contracts along to civilian channels. Through this, the brand developed an enthusiast following almost completely accidentally. However, in the late 1990s, Marathon received a request from the Canadian military that would alter the course of the brand and especially its relationship with the watch community. The story goes that the Canadian government reached out to Marathon on behalf of its dive teams, as well as the Royal Canadian Air Force search and rescue technicians, requesting a new dive watch intended for incredibly extreme range of conditions faced by SAR techs, who are trained in parachuting, diving, mountaineering, emergency medicine, and whatever else you need to know to perform extreme rescues in Canada's most remote locations. In designing the new watch, the Canadian government called for a thicker bezel that would be easier to turn with the thick neoprene diving gloves required in frigid waters. So Marathon collaborated, as you might imagine, with members of the Canadian forces, but also with members of the watch enthusiast community in designing this new watch. By 2000, the SAR watches were presented, and at the time, the dial featured traditional printed luminescent markers and an overall design in keeping with the U.S. military Type 1 specification more often associated with the Benrus Type 1 and 2 dive watches of the 1970s. In response to a request from the U.S. government, Marathon upgraded the SAR in 2006 to include a tritium illuminated dial and handset that made for easy nighttime legibility in virtually any conditions, dubbing the newest variant the Government Search and Rescue, or GSAR. The printed dial was retired, and since then, the overall design format has been more or less the same. Though the overall Marathon dive watch collection has expanded to include the 41 millimeter quartz variants, dubbed the TSAR, as well as additional sizes, the 36 millimeter SAR, or MSAR, and the Jumbo, or the JSAR. So for the purpose of this video, we're gonna be looking at the most mass appealing variant, the 41 millimeter option, the GSAR, looking at a couple different takes on the design as well. So we'll look at the different variants, we'll look at the high level first, but if you wanna get more details on the other just styles within the collection, we've done videos on the medium as well as the Jumbo in the past. I'll link to those in the description down below. Digging into the review portion of this video, it's clear even from a distance, the Marathon GSAR was designed to be a tool watch from basically every element of the watch's design. Starting with the case, which features an overall utilitarian brush finish, we have a rather conventional architecture for a dive watch with a 39 millimeter by 48 millimeter central case construction with 90 degree angles at the lugs shooting down towards the wrist. Crown guards feature just a bit of a curvature flank and one of the G-Star's most prominent design elements, a knurled screw down crown that is especially easy to grip and feels like it screws in a great distance compared to many dive watches. Resting on top of the G-Star, we also have another distinctive diver's elap time bezel and also one of the most important aspects of the overall design in terms of meeting the original requirements 
requirements. Compared to most dive bezels, this 120 click model is impressively tall at just under five millimeters in height and is profiled with gear-like teeth for easy grip on the sides. The bezel is one of the leading attributes that dictates other elements of the design, including the appearance of the dial, which we'll certainly get to. Overarching the 39 millimeter central case, it also will add two millimeters to that diameter, which with that inclusion will be at 41 millimeters, which makes sense given the size of this one. This is done to improve that grip and works in tandem with the struggles of verticality and using those tritium tubes on the dial. A black anodized aluminum insert features markers that are deeply engraved and then filled with paint for high contrast and easy legibility. At 12, a large triangular 060 minute index filled with superluminova, which is the only appearance of this type of material on the watch, as the dial, as mentioned, makes use of tritium tubes for illumination. When it comes to keeping the G-Star on the wrist, the watch ships with some different types of strap variations, with a 20 millimeter natural rubber strap, which while simple in its overall design, is extremely well executed for the price, being thick, supple, and an excellent pairing for this watch. However, for a more elevated, less casual appearance, Marathon also offers a brushed stainless steel three-link style bracelet with screwed-in links that is also excellent overall in look and feel, even if held back a bit by a traditional stamp clasp and folding diver's extension. And we will talk a bit more about the differences between this bracelet option in a bit compared to another one, so just stay tuned for that. In terms of wear, the G-Star is going to fit in a solid middle ground of dive watches. The central case is narrow with the large crown and the bezel being the only features adding to presence to that diameter and a compact lug to lug to boot with that. It wears like a true 40 millimeter case if I had to give it kind of an estimate while also showcasing a dial execution that visually makes this unlike any other divers on the market. So the dial of this watch is one that leads with function first with the general 12, 24 hour design that evokes some field watch designs dating back to the second world war. Markers on the standard variants are all printed in white on black along with the restrained dial text and small symbols denoting the watch's very moderate level of radioactivity and compliance with the US Nuclear Regulatory Commission. So don't be too concerned. A date window is nestled at the 430 position to not interrupt the rest of the markers. While the dial concept is straightforward, this dial's special sauce is the use of tritium tubes. Encapsulated tritium gas as a source of luminescence is unique in that it doesn't require an external light source like other compounds on the market, making it a great option for watches intended for pitch black use like the G-Star. And just to speak to some anecdotal evidence, I had this watch on my dresser just the other weekend and I remember just seeing it in the middle of the night. I could see it from across the room in my bed. Can't be said about pretty much any of my other watches. So tritium in certain use cases is a fantastic material. Viewing the watch in darkness, the dial here features two shades of tritium tubes with all the hands and the markers containing typical green tint, while the 12 o'clock marker contains an eye-catching orange to assist in orientation orientation of the watch. The catches with this material are that it doesn't shine as bright and these tubes are larger and thicker than most indices on another watch. Therefore, it requires much more vertical space to execute, especially when you consider that each of the syringe style hour and minute hands have their own tiny tubes as does the tip of that second hand as well. As a byproduct, the dial is classified as having a lot of visual depth with its deep seated surface within the case. This makes the watch appear thicker than it actually is in person and is a memorable design stance that Marathon can essentially claim as theirs. Flipping the watch over, we have a view of a closed case back with quite a bit of military style markings such as an ISO certification number, the NATO stock number, the amount of radiation present in the watch, the issued product code for the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, and the cage number, just to name a few. So like the majority of Swiss made watches in this price range of around $1,000, the Marathon now makes use of a third party caliber from one of the giants in the movement manufacturing arena with Salida. In this case, opting for the SW200. Now, while the SW200 is nothing sexy and I have a whole video digging into some of the most popular third party calibers on the market, it makes perfect sense for a watch like this one as the SW200 has earned a reputation for being durable durable, reliable, and easy to service and regulate. Earlier variants of this watch relied on the ETA 2824, but like many smaller independent brands, getting consistent access to production was a challenge, making the switch from ETA to Salida a must. In terms of the operation and specs on this one, we're looking at 28,800 vibrations per hour, four hertz. It does feature hacking and hand winding, hacking stop in the second hand when you plot the crown to the farthest position, and has a power reserve of 38 hours. But now that we have gone through a more complete idea of the general design concepts of the G-SAR, 
I want to take a step back and talk a bit more about the three key models within the collection. From the introduction of the Marathon GSAR as we know it today, released in 2006, the GSAR has been produced with a traditional matte black dial and stainless steel case. When it comes to variations, the first choice is the presence of government markings on the dial. This comes with little difference other than the text on the dial, but it is one of the original features that became part of picking a Marathon watch. Since the beginning, there have been some updates to make the line a bit more streamlined, including various upgrades to individual movement components, a switch from 60 to 120 click bezel, improvements to the bezel paint, as well as tritium tubes for the seconds hand that were quietly added over the years and now we're just standard practice in the models. But now the line has been broken down into three primary paths. The 41 millimeter GSAR Black, the flagship model, the all black variant of the GSAR known as the Anthracite that was introduced in 2018, and the white dial Arctic with its touch of red with its second hand. To discuss the most divergent of the bunch with the Anthracite, it comes with an IP coated black case, bezel, crown, and shafter ring, making an already tactical watch all that much more tactical, and a matching bracelet with a butterfly clasp in contrast to the standard model's folding clasp. This bracelet I find is very good, but the butterfly clasp is a bit harder to size compared to the traditional bracelet given its lack of micro adjustment. When it comes to the IP coating, these are not gonna be indestructible, but they are gonna be really well just positioned against some other variants in the market. So just keep that in mind. If there is gonna be one area that's gonna show its wear the most, it is gonna be the bracelet. So you can also just go for the rubber strap version. And I will say the rubber straps on the GSARs are very good, a lot better than most of the competition in the price range. So the Marathon Arctic was a watch that was pretty inevitable as a creation since Marathon released the MSAR Arctic prior with it being unveiled this year. Other than the white dial and the contrasting black handset and red second hand, the watch is otherwise the same as the standard GSAR, but offers an approach in direct contrast from the original. Now, I don't wanna to get too into the weeds in terms of the other sizes, but I just will mention this, the MSAR at 36 and the Jumbo at 46. Quite a bit of separation there. I will just mention this with the 36 millimeter because I see a lot of conversation about, hey, should I go for the 36 millimeter variant or the 41? I would say when in doubt, and for most people, the 41 is going to be a better option just given the elements of the case that I mentioned here. When you're talking about a 41 millimeter case, but really a 39 millimeter case with that bezel just kind of extending out a bit outside the perimeter of the confines of that case, that's going to make it wear pretty true to a 40 millimeter, which I think is gonna be the most appealing. And also when dealing with the 36, one element that makes the watch appear smaller is just how vertically set the handset is, as well as just how seated the dial is within the case. It almost makes it kind of look a bit stubby. So on certain wrists, it might not work. It kind of wears like a 35. So just keep that in mind. The same elements of the case are also present there, as well as you can reflect over to the jumbo. So if you're somebody that prefers a 44 millimeter case, I'd probably go for the jumbo. It is a beast, no question about it. And the 36 millimeter I find is very small. So just keep that in mind. It is for the smallest wrist out there. I would say for most people, the 41 GSAR is gonna be the way to go. But now to take a step back and kind of answer the idea of why these watches have kind of almost a cult-like following in a way, and I'll take mind off here and kind of speak to it a bit more. And this is the Arctic here that I have on my wrist. I think a big reason why people like these watches outside of the history that's involved, I mean, that certainly goes and assists with just kind of the story to be told here, is that there's so many watches that try to just kind of be unnecessarily pretty and forget at the end of the day that these were intended tools. And I think a lot of brands have just lost the plot in terms of that type of uh, thought process around designing a watch. These watches are not trying to be cute. They're not trying to be pretty. There's nothing about them that's kind of appealing towards design other than function. And I think that's kind of refreshing in a market where many brands are just trying to go for the latest and greatest trend. Marathon has pretty much stayed true to what they've done well and have really owned that and have catered to a marketplace where I think there's a certain type of consumer that's gonna to gravitate towards these. Whenever I've posted a video about these watches, somebody's always left a comment talking about having one as kind of their companion in the military and them being used to that degree. So uh, I think that always goes in high regard. I'd love to hear your comments down below about people that have actually went through that process. But I think the endearing thing about these are the fact that they're not trying to be something that they're simply not. They just go straight to the point. They're tool watches. That deep seated dial is really strange too. Like this is a watch that's kind of grown on me and I've been absolutely blown away about the response from these 
uh, since we've had them on teddybaldassar.com as well. These have become some of the better selling watches on the site. And as somebody who likes this style of watch now quite a bit more, I think a lot of people just probably go back to my videos in 2018 and think I'm like a dress watch obsessed guy. But honestly, if you wanna get a feel of what the modern uh, just kind of context of what my taste is, it really is more of like the Tudor uh, Black Bays of the world. It's the Marathon G-Star of the world. Also getting into Zen, which has become one of my favorite brands and some of these other German brands of that type. Those are the ones that have now become watches I love the most, these tool watches, uh, I've just come to appreciate them so much more. And this is a watch that kind of fits that mold as well. And from a design perspective, these have a leg to stand on because I think they're very different than what you're gonna find out there. Cool history and I think pretty reasonable prices as well for what you're getting. But all right guys, what do you think of the Marathon G-Star? I'd love to see comments down below. Have you owned one of these watches? I'd love to hear kind of your just story with this watch. I know there's some people out there uh, that are big Marathon fans and love to see those comments down below. And I'm sure other people would like to hear it as well because unlike a lot of watches out there, I know that these watches are typically bought to actually be used. So love to hear some stories down below. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe and hit the bell icon. Really would appreciate that. And that does help out the channel. Also, if you want more details about these watches, we'll have videos down in the description below as well as the product pages at teddybaldesser.com if you want some more information as well. Also, if you wanna stay up to date with the content, be sure to follow on Instagram as well. See some cool photos of watches. But guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well, and I will see you all very soon.